Arachaldeón, Custio y Eta Ambientari. Bienvenidos, buenas tardes a todos. Este evento va a estar en inglés esta tarde, entonces voy a pasar al inglés. Um, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the first event of the European Dialogues in 2016. I'd like to wel welcome everyone who's here this evening and also everyone who's watching us via streaming uh, from Belgium, from Czech Republic. Uh, welcome. On behalf of Globernance Institute for Democratic Governance, the San Telmo Museum, and the European Cultural Capital of 2016, San Sebastian, it's my honor to welcome you all to this event, the making of a European cultural capital. Uh, as many of you who have been following this project know, we've been now, this is our third year, actually, of the European Dialogues. We began in May 2014 in preparation for the European Parliament elections. And then last year, uh, we had a cycle uh, continue for each month of 2015. And effectively, we've started to see that there are certain patterns emerging uh, that we've seen from each of our debates and dialogues, uh, despite the fact of having a number of themes from environment to gender equality to elections. What we found really is that there's a lot of mystery surrounding the structure and the construction of the European Union. People feel very distant, uh, don't quite understand how to participate, how to bridge the local nexus to Brussels. So one of the purposes and objectives of this project, of course, is to really explain uh, what the structure of the European Union is, understand that it's a project, as stated by Jean Monnet, one of the architects of the European Union, that it's a project that is really step by step. So step by step, we as well in this project want to talk about different issues, um, hear from you. What are your doubts? What are your questions uh, about the changing Europe? In light of all the crises and challenges, uh, it's a very interesting time for the EU. So this month we talk of culture, next month uh, we'll be talking about migrants and refugees, and we'll continue month by month uh, trying to figure out what it means to be a European citizen, if such a concept even exists, uh, and what we should be looking for uh, in the future for the European Union. Uh, tonight, as, as usual, we have an illustrator, uh, privileged to have with us tonight, Pernan Goni, who will be doing a live sort of conceptualization of all the debates and ideas uh, that you can then see uh, posted on our website, not only tonight's illustrations, but from other past events as well. Uh, also, uh, we have a contributor for our blog, who after the event will be putting together her thoughts and ideas on what was spoken of tonight. Uh, tonight's blogger is Ruth Perez de Lucita. She's the content coordinator for the 2016 European Capital Cultural Program. Tonight, uh, we welcome you, of course. Uh, most of the night will be dedicated to debate and to dialogue. You may ask your questions uh, here. For those watching through streaming, we invite you to answer, uh, to post your questions on Twitter using the hashtag uh, EU Dialogues. Uh, our, use our Twitter account, uh, EU Dialogues. Mention that in your comment, and I'll be more than glad to ask your questions uh, for our speakers. Uh, so before we begin with the interventions uh, from the 2015 directors of the Capital Cultures of Europe and, and share their experiences, I'm sure it was a very intense year and this is a great breather as you now pass the torch on to us. Um, just very exciting for this week uh, in this city. Uh, give us a little bit of context of what it means to be a cultural capital of Europe, how it sort of emerged and, and why we're all sitting here tonight. So the story actually begins with a compatriot uh, of mine from Greece, Melina Murkuri, who was the first minister of culture in Greece, also the first female to be elected minister of culture for Greece. Uh, one of her greatest achievements was the establishment of the institution of the European capital of culture within the framework of cultural policy in the European Union. This was proposed in 1983, and in 1985, Athens had the honor of being the first capital, uh, culture of capital of <coughs> Europe. She believed at the time that culture was not given the same attention as politics and economics, and that a project for promoting European cultures within the member states should be pursued. The idea was that designating an annual capital of culture to bring Europeans <coughs> closer together uh, was important to highlight the richness and the diversity of European cultures and raising awareness of their common history and values. Today, the European Capital of Culture is a city designated by the European Union for a period of one calendar year. 
during which it organizes a series of cultural events with a strong European dimension. The preparation and organization of a European capital of culture is seen as an opportunity for the city to generate uh, considerable cultural, social, and economic benefits and to raise its visibility and profile on an international scale. The Commission of the European Union manages the title whilst the Council of the European Union formally designates the European capitals of culture. So, so far there have been 40 cities uh, that have been designated and this year, 2016, is with great enthusiasm that we kick off the European cultural capital here in San Sebastian as well as in Roklo, Poland. Uh, so with that context in mind, it'd be nice to know what actually happens in practice. Uh, having the rich experience of the directors of the two cities, uh, which are designated the cultural capitals of Europe in 2015, to hear from them and their experience. So the way our talk will be structured this evening is we'll hear in turn uh, from each of the directors, generally, sort of what the year was like, what were the challenges and the benefits, uh, their first-hand experience, and then start incorporating certain questions. Uh, what does this mean for the European Union? Is there a common European identity? Is this possible in light of so much diversity and division and challenge within the European Union? So with that, uh, we'll hear in turn uh, from each. And so what I'll do now is introduce the speakers and give them an opportunity uh, to, to let us know their thoughts. So Yves Vesser, sitting here to my left, was born in Kievrin, uh, Belgium. He's a graduate in social communication and theater studies. He was a journalist at the RTBF, which is the Radio Television Belge Francophone in Belgium for 10 years, coordinator of the Drama Center Ennuyé, and the director of uh, Le Manège, which is a very unique cross-border cultural center between France and Belgium, the cities of Mons and Maubeuge. He's also a playwright and an author of comics. Most recently, <coughs> Yves served as the director of the 2015 European Capital of Culture at Mons, whose transformation included the opening of five new museums, <coughs> a concert hall, and some 15 urban art installations. Quite a feat. He's passionate for theater and books, and he was quoted in an interview saying that his motto is, Faites-moi rêver. Make me dream. So, Yves, tell us about how all your dreams came true in 2015 <laughs> and your experience in Mons. Thank you. Uh, maybe uh, I have to talk about uh, the city of Mons because I suppose a few people here know uh, Mons. It's a, quite a small city, uh, 100,000 inhabitants. It's, uh, it's situated in the French part of Belgium, in the south part of Belgium, not far from the French border. And uh, of course, uh, the question was, uh, isn't it too ambitious to, to, to dare to be, to become a European <laughs> capital of culture uh, when you are just a village on, on the planet? But uh, I think, uh, of course, uh, I answer uh, no, it's not too ambitious, but <laughs> because I'm, I'm sure that the uh, small and middle-sized cities in Europe they have no uh, an important role to play, and it's the same for, for Pilsen and uh, for San Sebastian Tambien. Uh, because really, uh, they have solutions to, to, to bring to the, the main problems of uh, European cities, uh, European metropoles, in terms of mobility, of security, of welfare, of, uh, uh, of culture, of uh, education for, for young uh, people. I, I, I'm, I'm sure we have answers to, to give to Europe on those levels. And to, bid for, to, to become and then to, to be European capital of culture was a, a kind of answer to, to those uh, matters. But uh, also, we wanted to, to give a new future, a new development to the city. Mons, uh, at the end of the uh, 20th century, was in a very bad uh, social and economical situation because for the 60s and the end of the coal mines era, uh, there, was, there was no real perspective for, for Mons, and especially for, for uh, young people in, in Mons. We had a very high level of uh, unemployment, 
And so there, there was something to do, and the, the chance came with a, a new mayor called uh, Elio Di Rupo. Maybe you know him because he, he became uh, later prime minister for, for Belgium, and now he's uh, still mayor of Mons. And he decided really to to give a new direction to, to the city. I'm going to be short, but uh, I have to leave Jerry. But, uh, and he, 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 he bet on uh, culture, on uh, tourism, and on uh, new technology to give a new start uh, to, to his city. And he wanted to, to have a kind of purpose uh, to, to propose to, to the inhabitants, not only to to, to, to give a, a few lines like that, and the idea came that uh, Belgium uh, had uh, right for uh, European Capital of Culture in 2015. It was just in, in its timing, 10, 15 years, and uh, so we decided to, to propose a, a program based on uh, culture, tourism, and new technology. It's, uh, we, 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 uh, we kept uh, the the direction until the end, and I know Mons is really, and an, uh, I, I dare to, to tell a new city, uh, completely changed, and uh, another theme of our, of our year last year was uh, the metamorphosis of the city, and uh, but maybe we can come back on that uh, later. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to contrast it with the experience from Hills End. Uh, before we really sort of get to analyze some of the more uh, things on the underpinnings behind some of the ideas that you've mentioned. Uh, so we'll pass it now to Yidi Suhanek. Yidi is originally from Sobotka, Czech Republic. He's a graduate from the Faculty of Economics at the University of Economics in Prague with a focus on regional studies, public administration, and commercial communications. Most notably, from 2007 to 2009, he worked as the director of the festival Sobofest, which is a multicultural festival of music, sports, and workshops. Later in 2008, up to December 2010, he worked as a production manager and a representative of the Czech Pavilion in the Expo 2010 in Shanghai. Since 2011, he is the director of the OKD Foundation, a foundation that provides support to nonprofit organizations assisting those in need and improving social care, leisure, and environmental protection. And then most recently, of course, in 2015, he served as the director of the 2015 European uh, Capital of Culture, Pilsen, which centered on four themes, arts and technologies, relationships and emotions, transit and minorities, and stories and sources, both in relation to Pilsen and the European <coughs> debate. So, Yidi, if you could tell us, was your route to having the capital of culture the same or similar to Mons, similar goals? Good evening, Arad uh, Salde on. Well, to be honest, our journey to, the, to, become, uh, to become Pilsen as a European capital of culture started uh, as an outsider uh, in the bidding process in 2010. Uh, we were uh, definitely a weaker city and uh, we won with, I would say, smart and intelligent bid book against stronger competitors. And after that, what happened was a kind of crisis. And uh, my journey to the project uh, came in 2013, and I was adopted as a crisis manager, which is a first uh, uh, difference between uh, the city of Pilsen and city of Mons, where if, uh, as a good, uh, uh, pilot uh, uh, has been driven his, uh, his boat or his, his project for six years. So I've been in, involved uh, only two and a half a year, which is, which is the first difference. And it, it influences a lot the whole journey, journey of the project. But uh, in general, we uh, wanted to open beautiful, decent, former industrial uh, city of Pilsen, uh, 170,000 inhabitants uh, in the middle pass from the capital Prague to Germany to Nuremberg uh, and uh, Munich. 
so with big potential in uh, increasing the tourism, which was totally undeveloped, and it changed dramatically. We made a significant uh, uh, increase of, ter of tourism uh, during the last two years, and uh, the title is uh, for sure uh, much more wider. So tourism is the figures that helped us a lot. Uh, Everybody now understands there is some impact, economic impact, politicians understand it, uh, it brings money, it brings uh, positive energy, it brings tourists, which is not the case of San Sebastian. You, you already have plenty of tourists, but it always can be better. But what if uh, already mentioned, the title is uh, the way more important for the overall development of the city. It's about urban planning. It's about having the milestone, having the common targets, uh, it's about networking uh, with Europe, uh, which is to me one of the biggest benefits that we could contribute and uh, benefit for network from networking with uh, uh, Germany, Austria, Slovakia, with Mons, for instance, we did events together. People from Mons were sending us their uh, drawings and we were printing out products in uh, Pilsen 800 kilometers away and uh, sharing uh, many things. So to me, uh, now I'm happy and sad at the same time, because it's over and because it's over. Relaxed and wasted uh, at the same time. And uh, I think the change of the city is dramatic. It will never be the same. Uh, I think people appreciate it uh, that we took this uh, option and now, now the difficult question is what to do now because last five years the whole city, the last officer, uh, marketing people, tourism people, culture people, business people, they were all talking about culture city. Some of them were mad about that, some of, some of them were happy about that. And now we're missing this milestone. So now the difficult decisions will come, what's the next milestone? So. Briefly, this is, this is our story, and I wish all the best to the Nostia San Sebastian for the opening and for, for the year, and uh, a lot of courage to the organization team, because they will need a lot of fortune and your support as well. Oh, thank you both. Uh, you mentioned a number of things. I think you maybe had certain different challenges, but certain things were a bit the same. I think what stands out is, you mentioned, you use the word metamorphosis and you use the words dramatic change. Uh, maybe you could speak a bit more about that. What should we expect? What do you mean change? I mean, you mentioned also tourism and maybe a bit more economic activity, visibility, networking with Europe. But what does that mean for the face of a city? Uh, we have changed two different uh, levels. Uh, the city has changed. It's a real infra infrastructural uh, metamorphosis because we were quite lucky to, to receive uh, European funds to invest in uh, different uh, cultural, cultural infrastructures. As you told, we have opened this year five new museums and a new <coughs> center for, for music, a new congress center. Uh, and many works in the city to to give a, a new attractivity to to the city, and it needs it. But uh, and everything was coming, but thanks to most 2015, everything could be done in the same time, and the result is quite amazing. Uh, and not on, only for the foreign visitor, but. Also, for people from, from the region, they, they were really surprised to, to attend so many changes in so few, few months. And so, thanks to that, uh, I think we, we could uh, give back a kind of uh, proneness to the inhabitants of the region, because they need it. They, they need to to believe in, in the city, to believe in the future, and especially for, for young people. So it's that, that kind of metamorphosis. But it's more difficult to, 
to explain, more difficult to, to judge, but uh, also I'm, I'm sure the, the, there is also a metamorphosis of the minds of people. I'm sure there is a new way in Mons to, to live together, to share together uh, cultural events, to participate together to uh, a cultural projects. And we had in, in our official program many uh, participative projects, including citizens of, of the city. And so, uh, as uh, Julie told, uh, there is going to be a before and a after 2015. And so the, the legacy, of course, is to, we have to take care of that, about the metamorphosis of the city things are, are there and they are going to, to go on, about the metamorphosis of, of, the, of the mind, so uh, the, the, the new project, because uh, new stuff is, is coming on and the new projects are, are coming on, they, they have to take care of that because it's uh, so precious, they have to, to keep it in, in good state and to develop it again. And about visitors, uh, Usually, before 2015, we received uh, about uh, 250,000 uh, visitors a year, tourists, and uh, in 2015, we have received more or less 2,300,000 visitors. So uh, it's uh, quite an uh, inesperate result, more than what we were expecting. And so we have also to work to not to, to keep two million visitors every year, but uh, I think uh, to have a, a normal level around uh, half million of visitors would be a good reason for the future. And Edie, how would you describe the dramatic change that you mentioned in your city? Well, um, first of all, it's the tangible things, the infrastructure. We have a new theater, we have a new creative zone, we have a new amphitheater uh, for outdoor events and some parks and everything. So it was, it was the plan. The city gathered and made a plan, okay, let's make this, which is, which is especially in, East, in Eastern Europe, always not the case. Uh, secondly, it's, it's the tourism that increased. Uh, it's, it's funny because we, we did uh, also something above two million visitors, uh, counted uh, on the basis of uh, cell phones or mobile operators data. So we can confirm there was, oh, there was over two million visitors coming to the city of 170,000 people, which we find quite interesting. Uh, there was 35% people more that stayed overnight, which is crucial. It's, it's a good signal for hotels, for restaurants. It's the people that stay uh, uh, more two nights in, in the city, in average, which is also... Uh, this something to do with the mic, no? Uh, who's doing it? It's me or you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, uh, Let's, let's perhaps, make a yeah, break. Perhaps we can resolve the technical issue yeah. first. I apologize for the, for the feedback. The ghost of the museum. <laughs> this is one of our objectives for 2016. <laughs> Since sounds okay now. So going back to changes of the city, uh, infrastructure, economics uh, in terms of the tourism, uh, development of creative industries, which is which is interesting because no one would have ever paid attention to something like graphic design, movie industry, uh, 3D uh, printing, uh, mobile applications, and no one had a. Uh, intention to gather it somehow, to make a business and planning on it within the city. And uh, the fourth biggest thing is uh, what Eve calls metamorphosis, we call it open up. Uh, there, there always was a big language barrier. Uh, people in Czech Republic, especially the older generation, uh, mostly spoke uh, Russian. 
and uh, we had a big problem in uh, speaking uh, German, English, etc. And uh, my feeling is that city opened itself. Uh, people are more scared of tourists and uh, influences from outside. And now, after this really big test, we know that we can we can handle it and uh, the open up towards towards Europe. This internationalization uh, is going to every single decision process of the city now. For instance, we are talking uh, about the uh, development of uh, innovative centers, and the uh, first question is not where it's going to be, but who will be our partners. Is it going to be Germany? Is it Austria? Is it Poland? Which, which country is it? So this thinking is now going into any single detail of the city, and uh, it's the good, uh, good, good for, for the future decision and development of the city. And in terms, you mentioned earlier the networking with Europe, and you mentioned some examples now, and in terms of lasting change, ideas of, always, of collaborating and coordination, and this question is really for both of you. Do you feel that, uh, besides the, what you've mentioned in terms of networking and, and collaborative projects, has your work in, in each of your cities in the respective year, in any way do you feel like it's created a greater sense of European identity among citizens of Mons or of Pilsen? Uh, has that been, in any way, was an objective or something that was realized throughout the course of your work? <laughs> well, uh, I would say, in our country, maybe 50% of people, when you're saying something about EU, they immediately get in the negative tone. EU means problem, restrictions, whatever. Uh, so this is something that is essential in the DNA of regular Czech, Czech person. Pilsen is a little bit different because it's a little bit Western thinking uh, uh, city and uh, I'm pretty sure the project helps to think about Europe in a positive way. Uh, we had to explain that we had roughly seven or eight percent of the overall budget from EU money. It's not a festival that EU makes to celebrate how, how great is EU. That's not all about. So once you have a chance to talk with people and explain it to them uh, that there are different benefits that EU uh, brings you or uh, borrows you a brand and you can use it for yourself. Uh, you gives you the networking uh, platforms that you can use for your development. Now you see what's behind it and uh, it's, it's a long term process. It's not three years, but it's, it's a new start. And now we working with partners like Ars Electronica in, in Austria. Uh, hope with Tabacalera in San Sebastian, and uh, we have partners all over the world. Uh, and in Japan, we we did 35 projects with Japan's uh, uh, supported by Japanese companies, which is something that is not uh, quite usual. And uh, these connections now are strengthening, and I have a good uh, feeling about uh, being more European city than before. To bring Europe to, to the European capital of culture, it looks so simple, but in fact it's a mm. very difficult challenge. Why? Because on the contrary of the first year of the concept where uh, European capital of culture, it was not European capital of culture, it was European city of culture at, at that time. It was a bit like a festival of highlights, European events, and uh, if you uh, look uh, for the program of those years, I mean 85, uh, 2000. We have to change. I think I think we've located the issue.
Maybe, okay, I leave that. Oh, it's coming. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so, at, uh, during Social, it was uh, just a kind of festival, and what I, I call a container festival, because you, you can uh, look uh, at the programs of Social, it's always a, the same uh, guest. Uh, you can find a Pina Bosch uh, choreography, uh, uh, theater play directed by Peter Brook and so uh, some exhibitions but and it was going from Madrid to Lisbon from Lisbon to Paris and, but all those cities they are European capital of culture they don't need that kind of, of festival and so it was not really working to be honest even if it was a kind of uh, meeting with uh, some uh, European highlights and from the, the 21st century, and mainly from uh, the success of Lille in France in, in 2004, I think the European Commission insists on the fact that a project of European Capital of Culture has to be uh, deeply uh, 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 rooted in, 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 the, in, the, in the city. It must, it must be a project by and for the citizen. And so, the challenge is, at the same time, you have to bring Europe to the city, but you have also, and maybe it's more important, to bring the city to Europe. And so, it's not always easy to join the two, per, the two goals. And, uh, of course, we, we developed in, in Mons in 2015 uh, a few... Uh, European network and mainly with uh, Café Europa. It was a, a network uh, putting together 12 cities in Europe uh, having connections. You're unlucky tonight. Uh. Okay, we were connecting 12 cities in, in Europe and here we, we had some difficulties to, to have a, a link together, but so. Um, and it was w w working, of course, but uh, honestly, I, I'm, of course, people know they had this fantastic opportunity to be on the map thanks to the European government, the European politics, and, and so on, but I, I, I think they are more proud to, to have contributed to the development of their own city. Of course, in the European context, but uh, it's more difficult, I think, to to develop uh, main uh, European ideas in this context. But it's coming. They know Europe is behind that. Yeah. But I, I no. Uh, to be honest, it's quite difficult to to tell. We have spoken ob about Europe during one year. speaker in December 2015 at the European Dialogues event. We had Saskia Sassen, who's a Dutch sociologist, who spoke of the city actually as a strategic opportunity uh, for building what she called uh, urban subjects. Yeah. Uh, and, and really kind of in considering moving away from the idea of us as gendered subjects or racial subjects or ethnic subjects, but rather as, as urban subjects. So I think that it's an idea that really plays uh, in, into what you've mentioned and this idea of using the city as a mode of, of moving culture and identity forward. Uh, there's many issues I think still left to discuss. We have issues from social, uh, questions from social media as well, but I wanted to give a first opportunity to those who are here uh, to ask your questions. Of course, we have translation from Spanish and Basque. So uh, anyone would like to be the first to ask their question this evening? No? Okay, I see a hand here. Just need, uh, I think they've stepped out with the microphone. Uh, perhaps while we're waiting for the microphone, maybe I'll uh, maybe turn first. Okay, now we, have, uh, we have one question here. Oh, 
Bonsoir. Bon. Bonsoir. Vous m'entendez D'accord. Bon, moi je viens de France. Alors, ma lingui je suis very bad. Ni Castellona, ma Castellana también. Je vais donc parler en français. J'espère qu'il y aura quelqu'un qui pourra traduire. Oui, on peut traduire. J'étais bénévole à Marseille en 2013. J'ai créé une association qui s'appelle Bénévole MP13 pour justement que les bénévoles puissent continuer leur œuvre. Maman, on va cesser cette lecture. Après Marseille, c'est bon Après Marseille, je suis allée à Riga, en Lettonie. Et puis l'année dernière, je suis allée à Mons. D'ailleurs, M. Yves Vasseur doit me reconnaître, parce que j'ai mangé à côté de lui à la fondation. Je ne sais pas, par, par rapport à mes cheveux, peut-être que vous vous rappelez de moi, on a discuté ensemble. En tout cas, je me souviens de... I remember the, the group of benevolence from Marseille. Yes. Voilà. Euh, donc, je me suis dit, ben, l'année prochaine, euh, je ne peux pas aller en Pologne, parce qu'il y a le, le problème de la, du langage. Donc, je n'ai pas réussi à communiquer avec euh, Pilsen. Et je me suis dit, bah, on va faire créer un groupe franco-belge. Autrement dit, Montois, Marseillot, Montois. Et toute l'année, j'ai essayé de créer ce groupe pour qu'on puisse, en tant qu'Européen, venir en Espagne. Mais malheureusement, même M. Elio Dirupo, le maire, euh, m'a beaucoup aidé. Mais bon, apparemment, personne n'est venu et je suis désolée. Alors là, maintenant, je lance un appel. Est-ce qu'il y a des Espagnols qui peuvent venir avec des Marseillais l'année prochaine à l'ouverture de notre capitale, de notre capitale. Là, je lance un appel parce que je pense que se retrouver entre Européens pour vivre les mêmes expériences, c'est formidable. Et croyez-moi, hier soir, à la Tamborada, quand j'ai chanté, j'ai dansé avec des gens d'ici qui sont devenus mes amis, hein, comme ça, en, en espace d'une soirée, c'est formidable. Et cette hymne européen qu'on a entendu plusieurs fois en deux jours, c'était très émouvant. Donc je pense que euh, tous les Européens pourraient se grouper pour aller au capital. Le problème, c'est l'argent, parce que, bon, évidemment, ça coûte cher pour prendre l'avion ou le train, etc. Donc moi, je n'ai aucune subvention, donc ça me coûte très cher. Là, je suis venue euh, à Mons, on était venu à 13 personnes. Là, je suis venue avec 7 personnes seulement. L'année prochaine, il n'y aura peut-être que 3, je ne sais pas. Hein. Donc euh, je, je, je laisse ma carte de visite à toutes les personnes qui veulent bien venir avec moi l'année prochaine avec nous, parce que c'est une association. Voilà, nous sommes à la, à la pension Goïco, en auberge de jeunesse, comme à Mons. Ou à Mons, nous avons été très bien reçus, parce qu'il y avait une auberge de jeunesse formidable. Voilà. Alors, je m'appelle Nicole Georges. Voilà. Alors, le monsieur veut parler Ah, c'est formidable, déjà, j'ai un petit poisson, là. Uh, so thank you. There was uh, basically the idea added as to the possibility. Oh, oh it was translated. Okay. Uh, it was translated to Spanish into the mics uh, for streaming. It was the mention of uh, traveling to the European capitals, in fact, and, and that sort of movement. And if you wanted to respond or... No, there's nothing to add. It's a good idea. I remember very well as, uh, when they were in, in, uh, in Mons, but uh, as she has told us, quite difficult. Uh, next year it's in, uh, in Denmark and uh, ship, so it's not so easy. It's long travels and so, but why not? That's another issue that makes us sort of question what are the objectives outside of the city landscape uh, for these capitals of culture. Uh, on that point, we have a question from Facebook. This question is from Imanol Alvarez. Uh, uh, the question is, If we accept that governments and public institutions should promote culture uh, through their citizenship, if this is a as a responsibility and a duty of government and institutions, what should those objectives be? Uh, and if you consider the, the numbers, uh, would it not be more desirable to promote an active form of culture? And by this he means classes, workshops, uh, physical education, rather than passive culture, which is simply attendance to cultural events uh, as spectators. But I, I think more and more the, the jury uh, in charge of the designation of the cities is very uh, attentive to that, to that kind of uh, 
of, of projects and the, you, you need to have in your project uh, particip what I, I call uh, participative projects and uh, uh, we had in Mons uh, a very large call for projects including uh, everybody in the city and, and around with uh, very good results and uh, we had, had 20 projects coming from the population to the, to the official program of the European Capital of Culture. In this program we had uh, musical, theat theatrical uh, projects including uh, the population and with each time a uh, very big success because it's for me a, a lesson of this year that uh, people is no waiting for difference, uh, different things than the usual uh, cultural, cultural project. Uh, the, the, the main successful projects in Mons, they were not uh, the official theater program or musical program, but all those surprises we were organizing in the city, the new places uh, to discover, a new, new way to share together a project, to participate together. It's really the, the, the lesson to, to take from this year in Mons. I'm, of, of course, talking about Mons, but I think it's, it's true everywhere in Europe, because all the classical culture, you can have it in, in your in your living room with a large screen with the IFE, with everything internet everything is coming to you but uh, so if you want to take people out of their room you have to propose things they can have through the television or through the internet and the and the answer it's really a, a big and beautiful surprise of of 2015 in Mons. yeah Yadine, would you say that you promoted a more active sense of culture uh, in Pilsen through the project? Well, um, this participate, participatory or active culture, it's so much cliche and so much true at the same time. It's funny because the question started with the promoting uh, uh, politics of EU, politics, and it ended up with participation. So the politicians, they, they expect something totally different uh, than small participatory events and workshops and it's about the managing of the expectation of the majority of the city. In our case, uh, I would say 90% of people, when we won the title, expected it will be Madonna and Pink Floyd playing uh, every weekend uh, on the main square. And it caused lots of tension because the project is the way more complicated and the participatory events and projects are essential to develop the city in the long term. We prepared, for instance, uh, interactive uh, exhibition of uh, photos that we brought from Marseille 2013, and we let the people create their own gallery. We asked them to uh, show into their suitcases and find 100 years old pictures how the city looked like before, and we just provided them platform and create that uh, big, uh, big exhibition consisting of 5,000 pictures, and it was one of the most successful events, and no one expected it. It's, it's, the, it's the open up. We asked people to go, go out to the streets to Melina Mercury Day, which is called also European Neighbors Day, and asked them to uh, make a barbecue together, and we just brought them uh, a band, we brought them good beer, because we are a city of beer. <laughs> I haven't mentioned it. Pilsner Urquell comes from Pilsen, the best bottom fermented lager. <laughs> it should go there to the brewery and uh, stay some hours there. It's one of the highlights. Anyways, uh, going back, we provided them platform. Uh, good food, good beer, uh, just uh, uh, marketing... Uh, marketing uh, layout and ask them to contribute, to do what, whatever they want. And it became a tradition. And this is an example of those successful events. And for sure there were small events that no one ever uh, even noticed. It was 10, 15 people, in our case, uh, focusing on minorities from Ukraine, Vietnam, Mongolia, 
uh, living in, in our cities. But these, these projects are important and you have to find a good balance and during the whole year give something uh, for large-scale audience, especially before the summer, at the end of spring, to bring the positive energy, put something in the winter time just to keep the attention after the opening and then end up with something big at the end of the summer. That's easy principles, that's what people will appreciate and it helps uh, the tourism and uh, the, uh, the inhabitants of the cities because they are essential. If you're not playing fair and you don't take care about your, about your employees as well, <laughs> but uh, inhabitants, uh, inhabitants of the city, it's just to take care only about tourists, it, it would not make sense for the development of the city. So make another hand here in the audience. Hi. Uh, I'd like to ask, ask her, after these events, do the actual citizens uh, feel more European? Do you think it helps them promote some sort of European sentiment? Well, uh, I would not say that we found hundreds of ambassadors of EU during the, during the main year. But uh, people are definitely more open. We talk about European issues. Uh, we raise European flag, which was not the case. Just not, we don't have to do that, or many institutions, they don't have to do it. They just like to do that because now we have uh, connections to, to other countries. So I would say, I would say yes, it's, it's bringing benefit, but it's not tens of percent, it's small steps. I would say <laughs> no, but no directly. It's, it's not so, so easy. But uh, I'm sure uh, no, the people of Mons in the area, they are really proud of what happens. They are really proud to have invited so many visitors from everywhere. They are uh, so proud that the city is now on the map of Europe and that the name of Mons is, is well known in, in, in West Europe. Uh, and of course they, they, they know it's thanks to, to this project of European Capital of Culture. They know that thanks to Europe, because Europe gave them this fantastic opportunity to develop a new, a new project. And that's a, so the job we have done during years before, I, 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 sh I should tell between 2007 and 2010, <coughs> So, so before the designation of, of Mons and Pilsen, it's, it was really to explain to the people what is a European capital of culture, because this concept is not well, well known, not well known enough. And so we had to explain it's not a festival, it's a whole year. It's not money from the city, but money from uh, different uh, uh, sources. And, uh, and often to tell them, if you miss this train, it's not going to come back soon, um, never. And next time in Belgium it's 2013, and uh, 30, uh, 2030, and so, and it's very long. And so you have to, to take this, this change. And little by little, we, I think we succeed to explain what it, what it was, and, and now they have discovered the, the whole things, and uh, they, they appreciate it, just like in, in Pilsen, but, you know, it's so difficult to explain before what you what is going to happen. But uh, no, they know. But uh, I think European Commission, I, I, I told them a few times, they have to develop uh, a, a campaign of promotion of the con of the concept of European Capital of Culture because I don't regret to have spent so many time, so much time to explain. But if we could save this time for other things, it, it would be better. Uh, it's not only a joke, but uh, I think it's true. If, if tomorrow, I don't know, the mayor of San Sebastian announced uh, San Sebastian is going to be a candidate for Olympic Games in 2000, uh, I don't know, 28, uh, maybe people is going to think he's crazy, but, but they know what uh, Olympic Games is. You have not to explain. And European capital of culture, People look at you 
like if you was a, uh, coming from Mars. It's really strange, and no one they know, but of, of course, but uh, they had to know before because it, it can create really a, a, a feeling campaign around your, the preparation of your year, and we, we didn't have it. But I don't regret anything, but uh, I, I'm talking for the, the next colleagues. Well, I think the sentiment reflects the sentiment we've sort of extracted through, through our meetings here as well. Uh, this lack of information on not just uh, the European Union and its work in the cultural capital, yeah. but in all areas and aspects of policy. Uh, as a law professor of the European Union, it's difficult even to teach uh, to students and to conceptualize because it is under so much change uh, and, and the structure is incomplete and it's something we've accepted uh, and we're moving forward because hopefully constructively, but I wonder if maybe, uh, and this is another idea that I wanted to add in from, uh, from last year from one of our speakers who's a German philosopher, Edgar Grand, who spoke a lot of cosmopolitanism and that maybe we have a responsibility to tolerate difference rather than trying to forge one single concept of European identity or, or culture as European citizens, maybe the mark of that is our difference and tolerating such differences, right? The ability to be different without fear. Um, and if these need not be exclusive categories. So what do you think? Are you, were you celebrating difference, I mean, being from two sides uh, of the continent? Uh, was this about asserting your differences or trying to create common ground through, through your projects? Well, I didn't catch the question totally, but uh, speaking about differences about, and uh, uh, finding opportunities in being different, I think f for sure we can, we can learn from, we can learn each uh, other f from each other. We've learned a lot from Mons, for instance. When I hopped into the project, we had, uh, we had a plan to organize 10 or 11 joint big projects. Apparently, we end up with five big projects due to the uh, money resources and everything. And uh, we had a chance to work together for three years on development of a theater play, schools program, uh, digital project. And it, it helped a lot. These home and away, yep. Wilson and Mons. Home and away, exactly, home and away. We had a chance to promote uh, our culture in, in each cities. And these three years were just uh, one of the best experiences we did uh, for the for the uh, for the whole year. So, uh, if I may suggest you something, uh, you have a great partner in Wroclaw, 2016, big strong city. Uh, See how are you? <laughs> the director is over there. So, uh, once once you have a chance to do something, do it because these cultural differences are helping a lot to grow grow both of you. Nothing to add. Richness and difference. Uh, more questions from the participants. Yeah. yeah. Hello, my name is Matthijs Mausen. Um, I've got, I mean, uh, hanging into what you were talking about is the way of how I see identity. Is <clears throat> It's basically a process of how you um, negotiate who you are with the rest of the world. So that means that identity is something fluent. Yeah? Some, it's not static. It's not the way you're born is not the way of how you will die. It, will, it, it, it varies in different stages of your life. And I think that's the, one of the functions of a cultural capital is to give people the ideas or the, the input to see who they really want to be during that year. And that fits into what you earlier said also with, about Saskia Sassen and her ideas that basically a cultural capital could give the city places that people recognize where they could identify where they could negotiate their identity with the rest of the world yeah so this is my question also to Pilsen and, and, and Mons can you name such places in your city that could maybe inspire cities like San Sebastian to recognize during the year what what are concrete important places where where cities now, where your citizens now can negotiate their identity, and what is the importance of these places? You have depot, you have other places, but is that really true? Is that really happening in, in this year? If I may start, 
it, it happened. Thank you, thank you for, for that question. Uh, in our case, what was missing to our city is the big portion of pride. I can say Pilsen is now 50% prouder city than it was in 2014 because of the attention of media, because of we won the title, we did it, we managed to organize uh, and make a successful one of the most complex projects of the whole EU. So that's what the regular people think. And uh, regarding the concrete uh, spots in the cities or projects, for sure now we have a creative zone, we transformed former transportation depot within one year, or maybe eight months, to a creative zone, which was a plan B, but it, it worked out and uh, we have something where the Prague and people from Germany are coming to see what, what happened in the small Czech Republic. So it's one spot. Another thing, it's the interventions in the public space. We are a really conservative city. And uh, our faculty of design, together with our support, installed giant pink rabbit eating a human body into one of the traffic, uh, traffic spots uh, and it caused so much controversy and uh, uh, people were arguing and fighting for the rabbit. So these, these kind of things are helping to bring uh, the more uh, energy to, to the city and just it's not about green parks and everything, it's bringing the controversy about the discussion and make these uh, spots visible. And it doesn't have to be in the city center. We created maybe, or we produced maybe 40% of our program and projects in the suburbs. So these, these are the places that now are part of the game and uh, I would like to invite you to see them. Yes. Uh... The same in Mons, of course, uh, we told uh, we have opened new museums, new places for culture. It's important, but for me, it's not really the most successful uh, uh, things in 2015. But uh, those different places, for, for instance, mm -hmm. I can talk a bit about the Cafe Europa. It was a simple building based on uh, two or three containers put together. It was a cafe, so you can have a, a, a coffee in the afternoon or a beer and you can meet people and talk with them to create a, a relationship around new technology. Because when you talk about new technology, you see a, a guy in his room with uh, his uh, screens and uh, working alone. And we wanted to create, it, it was certainly not an internet cafe, but just a cafe where you can talk and you can participate to uh, explanation about a, a, new, uh, a new way to communicate or I don't know. And uh, there was this big screen uh, connected with uh, 12 other European cities. And Pearson was part of them and where uh, they can share, uh, for instance, uh, the, on, on the Friday uh, at, at 12 o'clock, there, there was an uh, internet meeting uh, around uh, uh, cooking, because uh, the Café Europa was situated in Mons in, in the market, the, the weekly market. And so people decided with Pilsen, with uh, Sarajevo, with, uh, I don't know, another city, to, uh, to buy the same uh, uh, vegetables, for instance, and then they were making a receipt together. And how do you prepare the tomato salad in Sarajevo? And in Mons, we do like that. And so, very simple thing, but it had a fantastic success because people need to talk. They need to, to be together, and they are so lonely uh, every day. So Small things like that were, were really working. We have opened a, a beautiful garden. People didn't know it in, in Mons, in a private house, and dedicated to literature. And so I, I thought maybe we are going to have a, a few people coming to just to 
to listen uh, to her. To, but it was an amazing success. I remember during the, the summertime, during the afternoon, there were 300 people sitting in the grass talking about uh, a book, uh, listening to a musician, uh, uh, poet, singer, things like that. Very, it's not expensive things, very small things, but different. And so those places, I hope they are going to, to go on in, in most in, in, the, in the future. Things are, are going on. Because it's really that way we can talk with, with other people in other countries, maybe, yeah. More than a theater, more than a concert hall. No, you both <coughs> described a really nice initiatives and you're painting a beautiful picture, but as you know, of course, there's also another side of the coin and the European capital of culture are also critiqued by many. Uh, we have another question here and uh, effectively this is raising the issue of the critiques that the European capitals of culture are acts of megalomania and excessive spending. Uh, so on that point, uh, we have a question from Eider Lizaralde, uh, who wants to know effectively what is the return on this investment to citizens beyond just uh, the increase in tourism? Excuse me, can you repeat Keeping the question? From the departure point, yeah. there's a lot of spending. This is a critique of the European capitals of culture. Uh, the question is, what's the return to citizens for well, so much public spending beyond tourism? Well, the tourism is the most visible one and you can you can measure it with a sophisticated methods for instance our project uh, uh, cost roughly 20 million euro a part of the investments in total it was roughly 60 million I think San Sebastian uh, budget is roughly 55 million euro for for the programming so it's maybe three times bigger than than ours uh, so it's it's the money that comes back to the city we calculated that at least it's at least 20 million euro, the same sum that city and the other investors invested, will come in refund to the, uh, to the profits of uh, providers of services in the, in the, for, for one year. It's not for everyone. Uh, the question was mostly what the regular person, uh, what the regular inhabitant gets, even if he doesn't work in a hotel or a restaurant. So it's, it's the, at the overall attractivity of the city. Once you have the title, you win something, you have more pride, uh, you have uh, more attention in media, uh, your living standard is getting higher, you, st you simply live in the city that is uh, going up, which means if, if you, uh, uh, if you uh, own a flat, for instance, the prices of, uh, the free, of real estate is going higher. This is, any single part of the economy if, of the city is influenced uh, by this project. For, for sure, it's expensive. To have eco title is expensive. That's uh, yes. undiscutable. But it brings in these small details like prices of real estate, uh, uh, attractiveness of the city, the wages. If you have a city where the living standard is better, the wages are higher. So this is a long run, and I think it's worth it to have the title. I'm sure. Yes, yeah, it's true. If a city like Mons or like Pilsen wants to, to, to pay a propaganda campaign on a European level uh, to, to have the, the same results, it's impossible. You can't pay it. It's so simple. Uh, Martin Aubry, the mayor of Lille, towards and 2004 uh, brings uh, to the city 10 years of, of, uh, of, of campaigns. So uh, I, I can believe that easily. So it's the first thing. But second thing, it's uh, for most, of course, we have not still all the, the results, but uh, we think that uh, for one euro we have invested in the operational program. Uh, between four and six uh, came back to, to the city. Of course, for hotels, restaurants, services, etc. But also uh, for all the enterprises uh, which uh, have uh, worked for the infrastructure, so all those workers who are from the, 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 the area. And of course, uh, 
it's a, a lot of money we, we could add to, to, the, to that um, coming back from money, yeah. So I think it's really I impressive. More questions from the participants. We have a hand here in the front. Thank you. Um, whom did the initiative come from at the beginning of, the, of your projects? Did it come at the top, at the beginning from the politicians, I mean from the top, and it had to come down to, to the citizens for them to, to participate? Or did it come from citizens who had the idea at the beginning yeah. and had to persuade then the politicians to, 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 to play the game? As I, as I told, the idea, I think, couldn't come from the, from the bottom because people doesn't know it exists. So they can propose the project, and so the idea has to to, to come from uh, from the mayor of the city because the, the city is, is a candidate, and so you have to, it's a political decision to bid for for, for the, the the project. But of course, he, he can't do it alone, and so and for for instance, I. I, I so I told you how it, it happens in, in Mons. It, the project of the mayor was to develop the, the city through culture and tourism and new technology. He didn't know how to, to sell this program to, to the population. And I, I, I was a member of the kind of think tank uh, about those uh, matters. And I remember very well, I, I, I told him, but do you know that he, he didn't know? That in 2015 is a tour for Belgium, to, for a Belgian city to, to become the European capital of culture. Say so, no, I don't know why, but <laughs> because maybe it's a good idea to to bid for the, this title to to have a, a goal for your program, and so I uh, say oh, good idea, and so in ten seconds after he tell me, told me uh, just you take care, and so. Uh, it was the beginning, and so of course, at that moment, I, 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 I create a real staff with uh, different kind of people from the associ with associations, from the local groups, and, and so on. But at the beginning, it's the, the city has to to bring the, the the project. If the city doesn't bring the project, it's not possible. I don't think mm. so. I think in our case it was a little bit different because what I've learned it was f about five to seven people sitting in the pub including the head <laughs> of the culture department and he came up with the idea that there will be something like European capital of culture maybe in 2008 and uh, what I've learned they invited for a beer deputy uh, mayor and uh, she kind of liked the idea, and that's that's how it all started. The impulse came from the alternative scene. It was not a mainstream culture, and uh, it was politicians. Uh, they saw the opportunities for themselves, for the city. How it's always, how it always is. I, I see nothing bad on it. And uh, after that, there uh, was be one person pushing it through. It's just a big project and uh, there must be someone that is willing to give heart and uh, fight for, for it. And uh, the situation, once you have uh, uh, real people behind it from the cultural scene, it's, it's a win-win it's a situation. The other thing is that these people that are usually at the beginning of project, they are not those who finish the projects. For instance, in our projects, I have only one person that uh, lasted six years in the project. So that's, that's, that's life and it's, it's just the different phases of the projects and different people involved in the, in the whole thing. Mostly uh, there are situations once there are two different or three different mayors from the candidacy to the uh, realization of the projects. So that's, that's life. Uh, more questions from those present. Uh, 
questions? Uh, if not, uh, perhaps bring up when you mentioned kind of management and the challenges, um, and also on your point that first it's a political decision, effectively uh, is culture an afterthought? And if so, how do you manage that when it is maybe so strung up with political and economic considerations? Well, first of all, we are not, we are not saving lives. We are not doctors, we are just making our lives better, providing better cultural service, making our cities uh, better places to be. So that's good to have always in, in your mind. And even if there are so many challenges during the year, people are leaving the, uh, the team, there is so much stress, there, is, uh, there are negative reactions from media. Uh, maybe one half of the culture operators uh, in the city, they they sort of against the projects. They just want to be part of big business. They just want to uh, do their thing and do it their own way. And now there's someone coming and saying, okay, you make your program more international. You bring EU dimension. You take people part of it. It's just not uh, only about showing rock bands on stage, but you, you shall develop something that engages more people and it brings lots of provo provocative questions and uh, uh, this controversial is I think it's it's good but at the same time it's really demanding on on team and uh, it's really hard two years of the main production Eve, what do you think? Is culture big business? Yeah, yes, it's a business, of course, but uh, the, the hardest part, it, it was really at the beginning, as I explained, because people don't know, and so if they don't know, they can invent everything about it. It's going to cost a fortune to the city, it's going to, to be the project of a few people in Mons inviting stars from everywhere in Europe and nothing for the artists in Mons. And things like that you, and so it's uh, you, you have to be quite courageous to go in meet maybe we we were organizing meetings every every night with sometimes with 10 people sometimes with 200 people in 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 cafe in uh, uh, factories in uh, libraries everywhere it's just to 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 talk and in the beginning, it was very, very hard because, and so people it was uh, oh very critical or ironic. What do you think, most European capital or culture, what, and things like that. Oh, and so, uh, but little by little, we we could first explain, and then the big difference came when we we got the title in 2010. So oh, they are not so bad. They 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 succeed to get it. So okay. And then, from at that moment, we we start with a, a kind of a participating campaign to explain people it was their project, it was their year, and they have to to contribute to the success of this year. And we propose different ways to to participate. And little by little, it came. And but uh, you know, until the the, the last minute. Uh, one hour before the opening, the, the beginning of the, uh, the start of the opening ceremony, you don't know what can happen. But, uh, and I wish you the same when you, you have spent a, such an evening and we had, it was the 24th of January, so more, more or less one year before yours. Uh, so you know the, the boat is on the sea and it's going to arrive. Uh, You've both made references to the citizens, or they, speaking of that, I imagine you're referring to the residents in each of your respective cities, but in light of the new arrivals to the European continent, migrants and refugees, how, and with your vast experience now in managing cultural projects, how do you manage a cultural landscape that's changing and under the circumstances in which it is changing? How do you face this challenge as managers of culture? Well, um, we are in a kind of specific situation that uh, in our country we have just hundreds of refugees. This, these attempts of the EU of distributing uh, refugees between European countries just 
didn't work. Now we all know it because once uh, refugees from Germany were placed to Czech Republic, they, they wanted to go to Germany. So they, they, they're not staying. But there are hundreds of them, and uh, uh, I think the role of culture is, an, is essential. We don't have uh, a specific program on refugees so, so far in our country because we don't need it. But I'm in close touch with uh, our friends uh, in, in Germany, mostly in Nuremberg and uh, Regensburg. And they prepared a special programming for refugees uh, to help them socialize themselves. Small things like taking them on a walk on Sunday and showing this is the bakery. It's not open on Sunday because this is a theater and we go there with kids in the afternoon because blah, blah, blah. So these are things that, well, culture can help to socialize refugees and uh, uh, I think uh, cities should pay an attention and create special programs uh, uh, for them. Well, of course, it's a, such an incredible problem and so we, we can solve it alone, but uh, what we can do in, uh, just to listen to them, to hear them, what they have said, what do they have to, to tell us? Because we don't know them. We don't. We just uh, hear what what the, the information can can tell tell us. But uh, and for the moment, there is a theater project in in Brussels, the National, and uh, they they have mixed professional act, Belgian actors and uh, refugees just to, oh, stop it. to listen to to so Daesh is coming. <laughs> it's to to just to to hear them during one hour or two hours. Who who are you? Why are you come did you take those those, those table boats uh, why, why did you risk your life to, to just to, to be in the street in Brussels? Just, just that. I think it's a really few things, but uh, if we can have this feeling and, and just to... to it's, it's, a, it's the beginning of a kind of socialization with, with them. Just, uh, but uh, the, we, the, the problem is not very sens sensible in most. It's more localized in, in Brussels, in a few cities where they, they are hosted. But it's, uh, it's quite... Uh... Yeah, it's, it's an intense topic and challenge. Yeah. In fact, uh, next month on Wednesday, February 17th, we'll have with us Dr. Annika Rumens to discuss uh, the refugee crisis and migrants and immigrants in the European Union, so you're all invited uh, to that. Uh, I'd like to give a final opportunity to those present to ask any questions. If there aren't any questions, uh, we, before we break, uh, there will be questionnaires being passed around uh, by the Cultural Capital 2016 Foundation to get your feedback. Uh, it's voluntary, but your feedback is appreciated. And I'd like to give my thanks very much uh, to, to both, to be Eva Servmans, to Yidi Suhanik of Pilsen. Also, congratulations for your year. Uh, tomorrow they will officially pass off the torch uh, here to us in San Sebastian as we embark on our year. Uh, so thank you for your petition and thank you to all of you for your attention and being here tonight. And we'll see you next month. Eskeri Casco and buenas noches.